All right, everyone, welcome back. So we continue our 23-24 season previews with the Montreal Canadiens today. So Montreal, um, obviously I've talked about, I think, every single Atlantic team now. So yes, this Montreal is the last Atlantic division team I need to talk about. So they're interesting with me because I always profiled them in the last seven season previews I made for the Atlantic as the team that is probably the worst in that division. And yes, they will probably be the worst, and I hate to admit that to have fans. I hate to say that myself. But I really do like the direction they're heading in, and it won't be for a few more years. But I really do think in the near future, we could see them make the playoffs for sure. But in 22-23, it was a step from an awful season the year before in 21-22, and they seem to be on the trend where they're getting better. They went 31-45-6 and six for 68 points. They were 28th in the NHL, uh, and they missed the playoffs. So a like a five-slot improvement there, or, or three-slot improvement from uh, being dead last last year. Uh, they obviously drafted Slavkovsky. And as you can tell, the core seems to be getting better. Uh, the chemistry seems to be better. The coaching seems to be better. They just overall seem to be in a much better spot right now than they were when I talked about them in the last preview last year. Regardless, I like them a lot. I really do. I really enjoy the core they have, and I think it's going to be a really good core in the future. Uh, your departures list goes as follows. You have Joel Edmondson, uh, Jonathan Druin, Dennis Gurionov, Chris Tierney, Paul Byron, Alex Belziel, and Rem Pitlick. So not that huge of losses there. Um, Edmondson was a decent top four guy, but obviously he's now in Washington. Um, good to get that cap space. Uh, same with Druin. It just never worked out in Montreal, so now he's gone. Uh, Gurionov um, was kind of just a rental, nothing more than that. So he's obviously gone as well. Uh, Tierney um, was more or less like a fourth line player. Uh, Byron, kind of the same thing. He retired, in fact. Um, then he got Belzeal, death player, and then Rem Pitlick was a good uh, bottom six guy, but nothing really more than that on Montreal. But yeah, overall, not that huge of losses, if I'm being brutally honest. I don't think I don't look at any of those players and be like, yeah, that's gonna hurt losing them at this stage of where they are right now. It's not. Uh, your arrivals list is short, but it's still very sweet, I guess. Uh, you got Alex Newhook, Leah Sanderson, and Casey DeSmith. So uh, Alex Newhook was obviously acquired for their first round pick that was later on in the draft. Uh, definitely a good acquisition there. A great second line winger, probably behind Cole Caulfield. Um, definitely a guy that, yeah, you gave up a little bit for him. You gave up a first and a second. Um, but still, I like him a lot there, and I think for sure he could be a decent contending, um, you know, obviously play well on that second line there uh, with the Vorak and Anderson. But, of course, we'll find out. Um, and then Leas Anderson, he's obviously been through some stuff, um, just like has never found, um, like, his groove in the NHL. He's gone from New York to L.A. and now over to Montreal. So he's been pretty much everywhere pretty much all over the place. So I would expect for him to get a shot for sure, but we'll obviously find out if he if he gets a good shot, if that makes any sense. And then DeSmith there too. Um, honestly, he could very well be either the backup or the third string. I think they're going to keep Montembault as a starter. Um, I just can't see a world where they're not. Uh, your lineup now goes as follows. Uh, your top six, you have Cole Caulfield, uh, Nick Suzuki, and Kirby Dog. And then you got Alex Newhook, Christian Dvorak, and Josh Anderson. So I want to say... A uh, little disclaimer that I did not make these lines. These lines are via the hockey news, so don't come at me for how these lines are formatted. It's not on me. It's not. I didn't make these. But regardless, that top six is solid, uh, but it needs to get better before they're a playoff playoff top six. Uh, but I like Caulfield there. Hopefully a fully healthy season. Could, we could see him get 50 goals. Uh, it's been a thing that Hats fans have been talking about for a while, and I think it's very possible. Uh, Suzuki, obviously a great captain, great first-line center. Uh, Kirby Doc there too. Good winger. Played well in this past year with Montreal. Uh, we'll see how Newhook does again um, on that right wing side there. And then Dvorak and Anderson too are over pace of contracts, um, but they can still be decent. And they look like they have been trying to move those deals out of there. Montreal has. So I, I, I would not I would expect for that to pick up again, probably. Um, then your bottom six here, you got Yuri Slavkovsky, Sean Monahan, and Brendan Gallagher. Then you got Raphael Harvey Pennard, uh, Jake Evans, and Joel Armia as your fourth line guys. And then for your bottom six, you have, um, or not your bottom six, your extra players, you have Michael Pozzetta, Leah Anderson, and Jesse Olivan. So I like that a lot. I like, obviously, 
uh, Slavkovsky on the on the third line, as I mentioned, he's a raw player. It wouldn't be a bad idea to, to have him develop in the AHL. Wouldn't be a bad idea whatsoever. I talked about him in a certain video alone. Uh, but yeah, I like him a lot there too. Uh, Monaghan, good third line center at that stage. Could move up to second line over to Vorak. It's very possible. And then Gallagher there too. Um, and, a, and a nice fourth line there too of Armia, Evans, and Harvey Pennard has been a pleasant supply, pleasant surprise um, for Montreal for sure. And then for the extra guys too, they'll get some shots. But obviously, uh, we'll see what happens come training camp. Uh, your uh, defense goes as follows. Then you have Mike Matheson and uh, David Savard as your first pairing. Then you got Jordan Harris and Jonathan Kovacevic as your second pairing. Then you got Arbor Jakai and Caden Gooley as your third pairing. Then you got um, more Justin Baron, Gustav Lindstrom, and David Ryanbacker as extra players. So Ryanbacker is expected to come to the NHL or the AHL. I'm not sure how they want to plan it, but regardless, uh, Ryanbacker is probably going to get some a NHL time. It has been said he will, but we'll obviously find out if that happens. Um, but yeah, the defense, still it's weak. It's it's young, re relatively. Harris is young. Um, Gouli, Jakai is young. They're all decently young there, besides like Matheson and Savard, who, by the way, Matheson got announced today that he's sharing the assistant captaincy uh, with Gallagher. So that's important to know if you're a half fan. But regardless, um, yeah, that's a solid. It's not the best blue line in the world, but obviously we'll find out. Um, you know how it'll do. And then your goaltending is Montem and Allen. Then you got the Smith as a third string goalie. You could argue the Smith as a backup goalie or the starter, however you want to do it. Honestly, I feel like they keep Montem and then have either the Smith or Allen battle it out for the backup role. So we'll find out. There's a lot of goalies in Montreal. And then of course you got Kerry Price just there. Uh, <laughs> your X factor is development for me. Um, I mean like Really, I can't see this team making the playoffs, and I, I don't see it why there would be a, a point to really, you know, like point at one certain thing that's a problem, like the defense, for example. I think if you just look at development, then I, I think you just develop the guys correctly, develop Slavkovsky, develop uh, New Hook, Harvey Penner, the younger guys in that lineup, um, Ryan Backer. If you can develop those guys, then you're in a good spot. And my biggest question is um, just improvement. Like, you want to see improvement out of this team. Um, I don't think I'm breaking any Habs fans' hearts saying they aren't a playoff team. They shouldn't be a playoff team. They should keep rebuilding. But I think the direction they're going, the way Ken Hughes is building this team, I like it a lot. And I think that um, not for a while, but definitely in the future, they will be a playoff team again, for sure. Uh, your point projections here now are via the Hockey News' fantasy guide, and they go as follows. You got Nick Suzuki at first with 65, Cole Caulfield in second with 63, Kirby Dock in third with 50, Matheson in fourth with 44, and then Hoffman in fifth with 41. So, obviously, good stats there. Suzuki and Caulfield leading the way. Your sleeper or your bust is Cole Caulfield. Um, don't be afraid to reach Cole Caulfield in the first few rounds, referring to fantasy. Injuries limited his 22-23 season to 46 games, but he was scoring at a 46-goal pace. Only 19 players scored 40 goals last year, putting Coffin in a very elite group. And the fact that he did that in 46 games goes to show that he's gonna that he has been great so far for Montreal. And just overall, Martin St. Louis, just a transition from that, and I've said it so many times, since the coaching change, he's just been so good. And I expect for him to continue that. Uh, in 23-24. Hopefully you can stay fully healthy and not face another injury. Hopefully not. But regardless, that is your 23-24 season preview for the Montreal Canadiens. Again, I don't expect this team to be a playoff team. That might break some hearts, but I just can't see it right now. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow we got Nashville and then three more after them. So we're nearing the end of the season previews. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.